my experience is very complex with my background and, and my assistant here being totally bicultural. So it's, it's something that you have to understand and, and people do not look at it in, in terms of what you accomplish, but they usually, without even knowing who you are, they just try to place you someplace and, that, and that, that's totally unacceptable. I think I'm more influenced by my New York training, but what I have done since the, I guess, mid-70s is try to combine the two. I use my Caribbean history, my Dominican history, and I put it in the context of the New York school, basically. And, uh, and that's also what I started using the collages in which I take part of the earlier history and I put in the present history through the collage, and people be able to make the connection. So how is this a political statement? It's the kind of thing that Europeans introduced to this country. Intellectual painters like Mondrian, I mean, this is a development of Cubism. They're going to pure abstract paintings, and people never thought that we had the ability to do things like this because we cannot think. The main reason why art is so important to me, the main reason why I be creative, I I also a very curious person. I think I'm instead of becoming a master. I'm always a student here. I'm always learning from art. Every painting, every, every new series of work, every research I do enriches me, makes me a better person, makes me a more knowledgeable person, a more interesting person, a better person, but I still consider myself a, a, a student, a curious person, somebody who is yearning to learn, to, to, to really find out about life. I grew up in a dictatorship. I came to this country running away from, from the situation in the Dominican Republic. I wanted to be free. I worked at different things. I did many things, but it was always a goal that I, I needed to learn English. I needed to go to school. I needed to get an education and assimilate into this culture because I didn't come here to eat. I wanted to be part of it. I wanted to contribute. I wanted to get from this culture. I wanted to give back. I feel I, I, in, my, in, my, in my pursuit of freedom, the only thing that allows me to be as free as possible is art. The art world is very small. It is totally segregated. And one of the things they use to segregate is uh, ethnic background. If you go to the museums today, every museum in any little stinky town in the United States, and it's seen that they open new museums or, or they enlarge museums like 50 every year, you find the same boring white artists. And depending on the budget of the museum, the quality goes down. And it's terrible to see a well-known artist in a stinky museum with a stinky piece. These museums, you open up their eyes and find out that a lot of other artists that that budget can really make a good collection. I paint extremely fast and I don't want that to be misunderstood. I, I paint so fast that regardless of, of the style, of the technique, I just paint fast. And it's because I, I do a lot of thinking before I, I, I paint. When I start painting, I forget about all the thinking. I become very physical. And I just do it. <laughs> if I don't like it, I change it or throw it away. But I'm not going to have to say I spend like hours pampering and looking around. Oh, and the canvas cost me $10 and I spend so much paint. No, I can't do that.
That's one thing I, I, I really like about painting is that if you have an open mind, I mean, you can just practically do anything. You don't have to say, well, I'm going to do this. And, and even sometimes you have something very clear in your mind and you start painting and the painting kind of tells you what to do. And it's not good to fight it. And that's how actually you went do, doing some great painting. Something about the unknown that I think is really fascinating when it comes to approaching art this way. <laughs>